Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome to Rugby AM. We are here at Bellevue, Jonesy. It's a huge game. Wakefield potentially going third in Super League. The only team to spend under the cap. Is it a miracle? I don't think it's a miracle, but it's synonymous, isn't it, with 2017, the year where the unbelievable has happened. Cast right at the top. We're back in the mix as well, at least, but it's all about Wakefield today. We could potentially leapfrog into third. You've got three Yorkshire teams in the top four place. Four Yorkshire teams. If you count all four, four, Yorkshire teams. four Yorkshire teams. Yorkshire, Yorkshire. Mate, Justin Albrook, Sean Long has walked across behind yeah. us. The Saints, it's like the, the new coming, a new messiah at Saints. He has turned the form around. We've been speaking to Ben Barber behind the six. He's coming back in three games. It is exciting times and they need a win today. They certainly do. I don't know about Messiah, it is a Sunday, but it is new beginnings, I think, for St. Helens. They have turned a little bit of a corner and they're on the upward spiral, but the question is, is it too little, too late, Simo? Mate, it could be. Wigan as well, getting the win the other night over you guys. Oh. Hooker, skipper. How are it to play hooker, Jonesy? It's all right, mate. I've, uh, I've had three opportunities in my career and every time I got to game day, they've gone, Nah, I'll leave it. Did you enjoy it? But I got over Did the line. Enjoy it? I didn't enjoy it. I don't enjoy getting beat, but it was a bit of fun. And it served the purpose. Great young kids and a uh, good future, I think. Right, let's go and speak to Michael Carter now and the Wakefield guys before game and see what their thoughts are. Wakefield could potentially get a win. Leapfrog Hull this week and go third in Super League. Would you have ever expected that at the start of 2017? Well, I think we'd all love uh, a Yorkshire top four, wouldn't we, Jamie? <laughs> it's uh, yeah. go down a street this side of the Pennines. Yeah. Um, I, I, I guess I've always been pessimistic. I think when you look back to 2014 and 2015, yep. we had some really dark days. So I guess that brings the, the pessimist out in you. I think the Chesi and, and all the guys have always seen top four as their focus. Um, but it's, it's the way we've played. You know, even yeah. if we'd have been sixth, seventh, eighth, you know, we've just played really, really good rugby and it's been a joy to watch. And I've been able to just sit back and relax and watch it. So it's been fantastic for me. And, and Wakefield haven't spent the full salary cap. I think you're about £225,000 short. How do you get that sort of consistency for that money? Oh, don't tell the players, they'll all want a bit more. <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, we tend to pick up players, I guess, that haven't quite fitted in at other clubs. Yep. Um, and they come here and they see a chance to make a name for themselves again. And you know, people, clubs like Saints wanting to bring Ben Barber in and we were just fortunate yeah, yeah. that we could then bring Adam Walker in. So, yeah. you know, I think that works for us a lot and we've got a really good group of players now with it, that want to be here, uh, want to achieve things together. They're, they're a good, solid group um, and it's worked well. So, you know, uh, I said to uh, Sam Allen, the salary cap manager this week, <laughs> my job is done. I'm now spending 1.6 uh, million and we're fourth in the league. So my job is done. Now, Cass isn't too far away. What Rugby League has done for this area this year must have really lifted spirits and you'll have noticed that as well being a local person yeah I think it's great you know let's not forget Featherstone as well you yeah know, they've absolutely had a, a fantastic year yeah. as a, as a part-time club yeah. being the highest part-time club in, in the championship as well so I think rugby league is, is really vibrant in this area um, you know if we talk about Wakefield singularly it's the last professional sporting club in yep. Wakefield um, so we've got to capitalize on that I want my kids and other people's kids to be aspiring to play sport yep. and in particular rugby league so we've got to capitalise on the fact we are the last professional sports team in Wakefield. So let's, you know, let's really ride this wagon. Golders, how are you? I'm doing good, man. I, uh, I dug some old video tapes, some old DV tapes out from the loft last week, and uh, there was some old video footage of us going to Australia in 2002. Uh, England Day, do you remember that? Ah, uh, yeah, I do remember. Uh, it was a fun trip. We, uh, we toured around Fiji and Tonga, and. It wasn't the best of trips, uh, we'll get smashed, smashed a bit, but it's always fun times like that and being with the lads. Frogs jumping everywhere during the game. Uh, we played on like a coral pitch and the skin come right off my knees as well, trying to miss out on one of them. But experiences like that, you had people like, um, I don't know, Wayne Price, uh, we had Paul, Sean Lachlan, we had um, Big Richie Moore, loads of different types of players. But those experiences were great, weren't they, for our development? Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, away trips like that you don't miss. And, uh, 
you see players now and like obviously I met with you now and we talk about them sort of things what happened in the past. Obviously, I'm not a legend on the pitch, but you're more of a legend now at Bramley, so you took over my mantle. Mate, I've played about a million games for Leeds and I still like scored a quarter of the amount of tries that you did in your time. But tell us what, really quick what you're doing here today. Yeah, uh, basically, I have, a, I have a big association with Farnley Falcons now, uh, and they played before the game, so I've come down and watched them and supported them before the game. Mate, I reckon you've still got another year in you playing. So get <laughs> back out there, play a bit of Sugar League. Carter's just said he's got 220 grand in salary cap. If he offered you half of that now, would you come and have a run around for uh, I'm not going to take a pay cut, no, so <laughs> I, 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 stick where, I stick where I am, thanks. <laughs> so where are you playing? You're playing a bit of rugby union, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, a bit of rugby union down at West Leeds rugby union, which is good. Uh, we don't get paid down there, but we're doing all right. We played at Twickenham this year and we got to the final of that, obviously, and we won that, so it's good. Laughing, absolutely laughing. Right, you are coming back to play a bit of rugby league. You're going to be playing in uh, Yorkshire versus Lancashire. Legends game, which is epic. It's got the type of quality of player that I reckon would beat Queensland, mate. There's some really <laughs> big names. Are you really looking forward to yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, like, like I said, uh, I played, I was lucky enough to play in Yorkshire versus Lancashire when, when you used to have it and stuff like that. And it's fun days to have, and obviously, <laughs> you want to you get over the Lancashire team, but looking at Lancashire teams, they're, they're probably favourites to win. I was uh, still trying to get in. To, I never made it, I never made it, called as I was still trying to get in there uh, for a lot of years. And it finished, but it's good to have a Yorkshire Lancashire game yeah, to go at, isn't it? Yeah, it is, there's, there's going to be some rival there, uh, no, matter, no matter what, even if you are 35 and still playing no more, but there's going to be some rivals, so hopefully the best team wins. Absolutely. Who, who do you want to get your knuckles around? Who are you, who are you targeting? <laughs> I'm not really. I'll be on the wing, so you're not really target anyone. So I'll leave it to a big lads like JP and Barry and that lot to get stuck into each other. All right. I'll frame it another way. Who are you going to skin, Colby? <laughs> because you still got the speed. Yeah. Obviously, obviously, a, a big rival is Eddie Garner. So if I'm against him, hopefully, I'll try. I'll try skin him. Saint Helens coming to Bellevue, and it's it's a strange one uh, within rugby terms because the last few years Wakefield last year obviously getting the eight, but then really struggled. This year. Could cement fourth place in Super League? Is it all down to you, John? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> no, I mean, obviously, I think it's just been a great collective effort. I think, first of all, that Chris and Michael Cart have got to be complimented with the recruitment aspect. Then, obviously, pre-season went well and there was a belief within the group. But the, they've just got better. As the season's gone on, they've actually got better. And the, the, it's like a momentum, a snowball effect. There's a belief, there's a confidence. And, obviously, now we're looking at round 23 and the possibility of fourth place, which would take us greatly into the playoffs. It'd be a great result because it'd move you those few points away from Saints. Because yeah. Saints look like the danger team. With Ben Barber to come in, I don't know how many games he'll actually get to play this season, but he's, he's a fantastic player. I'm looking forward to seeing him play Super League, but they are the danger team for that fourth spot. They are, then uh, you know, they've got better, haven't they? The, the yeah, new coach has, has certainly brought something to them, and uh, they've got the big fellas in the middle, your Wormsley's will roll you back, you've got James Roby who jumps out from dummy half, you've got a half-back so will run at you, and out on the wings and so on with Tommy Makers and Regan Grace and Lomax at full-back, they're plenty of strikes. So they're a real good rugby league team, but believe you me, in 2017, Wakefield Trinity are a real good rugby league team as well, and we're just going to embrace this challenge, look forward to it and hopefully be successful with it. We had a good chat with Danny Kermon, who you'll see later on in the show, um, as the, a few of the boys took on an eating challenge it's definitely worth staying tuned for um, but Danny said that there's there's a real sense of togetherness within this group he says let's be fair the, the culture wasn't always great before Chesley came in we did out a few players and it seems like now the lads work really hard for each other because I asked him who's been your players playing and he said you know what there's been quite a yeah. few yeah and I think that's pretty astute of Danny as well. And it, 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 it ain't just about it, it's a team sport. And that's why I love rugby league so much because it's about group dynamics, it's about bouncing off certain people, it's about responding to other people. And, and I just think as a, as a group, we're really solid and the players like each other. They really enjoy playing rugby league with each other. They enjoy coming to work with each other. They know the roles within the group and they execute the roles really well. And if that happens, you ain't got a bad team. One player who's done the business and he's come from Huddersfield is Scott Griggs. He's been a great addition. What I love about him is his positional play. He's never, ever caught out of position. I think he's an exceptional rugby league player. I mean, I was fortunate enough to get him here. We signed him here before from Widnes when Widnes uh, didn't win the championship grand final. We signed him and Damien Blanche. And he came here and he was great for me then. And, you know, obviously re signing this year has been massive for the club. But you like his positional sense. You know what I like best about him? He's competitive. 
If you were going to play cards with him, he'd want to be you. You want to play Tiddlings, he'd want to be you. You want to play rugby league, he wants to be you. And that's what he brings as well. So that will, as well as his skill, brings a lot to the team. Let's go over and find out how Scott's feeling before this big clash. Um, obviously a big game. If every point counts at this stage, it's almost a Super 8s game already without, before we start. So looking forward to it. It'll be a tough one. And, uh, and as far as the season's gone, uh, I mean, I know all teams set goals at the beginning of the season. Um, have you overachieved your goals or are you, are you sort of where you'd like to be at this time of the season? Well, yeah, they sort of went out the window a while ago, if we're honest. Um, it's been a while since I've had to have the team sit down and reassess, which is great. Um, obviously, they made the eight last year. I wasn't involved, but they didn't make a dent and sort of disappointed with how they finished. No points and not even a chance to go to the semi. So. That was the aim, getting there and actually have a crack this time. And obviously, we're now in an opportunity where we can finish in the top four to get that to get that next uh, the four home games. Whether it's power station, factory, or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, Spec, the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory, or stadium, covering installation or maintenance. Spec, the specialist power contractor to industry. Down at Man's Markets, a good friend of mine, Ray Chan, set this place up. Now, I worked with Chani at Candy Pants for years. It owned the, the originator of Candy Pants, the club brand, moving into restaurants. And I thought I'd bring Danny Kerman, who knows all about the Orient, because he married to a Japanese girl. Yeah, yeah, she's uh, half Japanese, uh, so um, her mum gives me uh, plenty of food when I go around there. She's a great cook. I've, I've been over to Japan, obviously. It's uh, a little bit different, this, but it's uh, a restaurant I've uh, followed for a while on Instagram. I've been dying to get down, so thanks for inviting me down, Simo. Um, we're going to sample some food today, and we're going to get a few of the bigger boys, because Wakefield, I've got some big lads in the pack. Um, and you, you'd think, really, they couldn't do some minutes, but they do chubs. Dave Fafita, Adam Walker, Keegan Hurst, Anthony England, five of the biggest players in Super League. You know, I think I'd, be, I'd fit right in in there. I think Clogger's always hammering me about my weight. And I think Clogger, I think, I think there's room for me in the wakey pack. Yeah, it's a, it's a big pack, it definitely is. I think uh, over the years, that's what the fans have wanted. They've always said, oh, we, we struggle for size in the middle of the field. And uh, this year, it's, it's just amazing to play behind them guys, really, because they're all big and they're all very aggressive as well. I think. Adam Walker, when he first came on in his debut against Wigan, I think if I was still in a Saints shirt, he was running around like a, a madman in a derby game. And I said to him, just, just calm down for us, you'll, you'll end up burning yourself out here. Like, yeah, I'm all right now, I'm all right. But the same, same for him all. Chubbs, I've, I've not seen anyone uh, the size of Chubbs do the minutes that he does, to be fair. He, he does some massive minutes and, and all of them do as well. They're just, they're just uh, great to play behind the lay, a really good platform. Since the disappointment of losing Kez, uh, Justin Albrook's done a fantastic job at Saints. Uh, they're coming over full of confidence, had some great wins. But this week could be a real pivotal battle, because if you win it, you go, I think it's seven or eight points clear of Saints. And that fourth spot starts to look a little bit more secure. The, the change of coach, probably a lot of them would have been disappointed with, but I think it's suited a lot of the players as well. And you see people like Percival now really playing some great rugby and, and they're a very dangerous attacking team. They've obviously got players like Zeb Tyre and, and Kyla Moore, my mate Mara, is uh, playing some good stuff as well. So it's going to be a tough game, but we're looking forward to it. So it's when no one really likes coming to our place. It's uh, a bit of an old style stadium. The changing rooms aren't, aren't too great for, for the away team and, and the atmosphere is pretty good for us as well, so we enjoy it. Right now, let's order some food before the boys get stuck in to the man's challenge. Check this out. Right, Dave Fafita, the main man. You've seen the food, the food is out, the man's challenge is out. Four, are you going to take it on? Are you nervous or are you confident? 100% oh, we're nervous. Um, <laughs> look at it. <laughs> from, a, from a picture, yeah, it looks all right, but when they're in front of you, it's a bit intimidating. Uh, Full point of beer to go with it. That should get the rice down, but... Sorry, boys, but I think we'll be getting a free fair team. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you've come over, uh, obviously, from the NRL. You, you, you're always playing with a smile. That's all I like about you. Jonesy says you got stuck into him on the first game you played against him. But he says you're, you're a really tough guy to stop. Are you, are you enjoying your time in Super League? Are you enjoying your time at Wakey? Oh, yeah, I enjoy, I've enjoyed it so much. Um, 
but they've been a pleasure to me. Like, it's an um, awesome experience coming over here last year. I didn't think I was going to be coming back this year, but they made me feel like home. So it's such a great feeling being here, and yeah, they've all made me feel welcome. Mate, no one expected Wakefield to be in the top four in the round. Uh, this weekend, if you win against the Saints, confirm top four. Did you know at the start of the season, did you, you looking around at the boys, did you have confidence that you could do something this year? Oh, there's always confidence. Um, I think I had an interview at the start of the season and said, I believe we have a top four team. And yeah, I'm sure like from what we've seen this year, I think we've proved a lot of people wrong. And um, Danny Kermorn, he's led this team pretty well on and off the field. From actually. the sidelines. So, yeah, from the sidelines the last few weeks. <laughs> but... Nah, he's always that easy out there, every game, every bus ride and stuff like that, so he's been great. Let's see how the boys get on right now. Man's Markets, Man's Challenge. You've got three Man's Mountains, you've got a prawn cracker, a pint and some chips. Your time starts right now. I'm joined by Ray Chan, uh, one of my oldest friends and uh, partner in crime. We used to run nightclubs together. Uh, as a successful club promoter, owner of Oracle, uh, what made you want to go into restaurant Uh I, I grew up in, um, you know, I spent my childhood in like Chinese takeaways and restaurants. And when I got away from it, went, in, went to uni and got into events and created candy pants. Um, I watched the market for a long time and I noticed that no one had really changed how Chinese food was sort of presented. Uh, no one had really developed a, um, you know, an accessible sort of concept. Mo most people sort of see Chinese yeah. restaurants as like, um, it has a carpet, it has a fish tank, it has a dragon <laughs> on the wall. And I, and I just thought that um, it's totally it, different. it was time to do something new and something accessible for everyone. Um, in more of a modern way. Yeah, it's like a modern twist on Chinese, and it? it's pretty cool, pretty laid back. The boys are certainly chowing down. He is a, he's a beast, he's a beast. Kermo's well on the way now. Uh, the Man's Challenge it runs every Tuesday night, you, and you had one guy, Beard Meets Food, from yep. YouTube, professional eater, who did it in under eight minutes. The boys at the moment uh, have gone over this, over the 10 minute mark, but it's still a real good score. What's the uh, what's the signature dish? If you say to anybody coming down here, what's the man's market signature dish? Well, what the lads are eating is um, our man's mountain, and normally people just have one, but um, you know it's a it's a it's a popular dish along with um, some of our most liked dishes on the menu, which is sweet and sour chicken. It comes yeah. out on a like a hanging skewer, and um, you know, a lot of people like it because just because it's very Instagrammable and everyone likes sweet and sour chicken, so yeah. that's a big seller. I've eaten I've it, here. it's absolutely unbelievable, mate. Congratulations, congratulations, uh, and hope it all goes well. Right now, let's see how the boys crack on, and if anyone beats the time, second place now, 12 minutes.
winner, winner, Chinese dinner. Kermor taking the spoils. They for feet. We're just about to finish, and you, uh, you, you smash it down. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to win. I knew Dave were there. Uh, just uh, will to win, mate. Got me over the line in the end. It, it was a tough slog. Really nice food, so you feel feel bad making it look like a tough eating, really. But yeah, managed to get there in the end. Janet, it, they talked it up. Tom Johnson here. Talk, look, at, look at him. He talked it up. He's a broken man. He only did one and a half. Well, not even half, really, is it? It's, it, it's harder than it looks. And he switched his drink, did he not? <laughs> and he switches it to a cider. Um, <laughs> um, it, it's tougher than it looks, though, isn't it? Oh, 100%. I tested it in February and I did it without the pint, the chips, the cracker, and it took me 44 minutes. Come okay, on, well, you did it in half the time with Chani. You're proud today. Is this it's going on CV? Yeah, me, right. obviously. <laughs> me, me, my wife's half Japanese, so she'll be happy with me, Simo. You know, I've obviously had plenty of practice with the rice and that so uh, yeah I'm, I'm happy to do it for the family mate okay, well, you, you set, it's taking your pride in, into tomorrow we're going to meet up first thing in the morning we're off to a bird of prey sanctuary you're a bit of a twitcher right <laughs> you, you ready for some eagle action yeah I can't wait mate uh, you know I get plenty of stick off the boys for that um, but it'll be a good day out Simo I'm sure I'll be able to turn you mate I can't wait to meet some <laughs> eagles and owls and all the rest of it <laughs> We'll see, we'll see, we'll see Danny as we go to the York Bird of Prey Sanctuary. Cuckoo! <laughs> Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome back to part three here at Rugby M. And we're really, really excited because it's Challenge Cup Week, not just for the boys, for you guys in the semi, but it's also for the girls, the Challenge Cup final. Our very own Lois Fussell is playing in the final this week at Ewarth for Bradford against Featherstone. Lewis Forsell is a de facto ruler of women's rugby league. She's doing an amazing job. I love what she does. And we're reviving the past with Yorkshire Lancashire, have you seen earlier on in the show. And this is all about the future. Women's rugby league, it's a big part of where the game's going. And this Challenge Cup final could be a good way to show that as well. I'm really excited as well because Challenge Cup final is really, really important to us at Rugby M. This year, we've teamed up with the RFL and we're offering an exclusive trip to Club Wembley with us at Rugby M. And it's been confirmed, we've got legends going on our coaches from have. six different locations. And guess who's leading the Cass Army? Go on. Wayne Wagger Godwin. Look He's at that! on the coach. Come on, Simo. Come, Come on, Simo. Simo. Jonesy. Simo. Jonesy, where are you? Yeah, so he's Wagger's taking the Cass crew down to Wembley. So please look after him because he's a bit of a loose character on an away day, without a doubt. He certainly is. He's got me into trouble a few times this year. But we love him. That's why we love Wagger and we send him down with you guys. Right now, let's go over to Oddsall and meet Lois and her teammates as they prepare for the Women's Challenge Cup final. We're at the home of Bradford Bulls, a team that I play for. We've got a huge game next week as we play in the Challenge Cup final. I'm going to catch up with some of my teammates to see how preparations are going and how excited they are for the game next week. We're here with one of my teammates, Lauren Hickey, who plays with me at Bradford Bulls. Lauren's a prop for Bradford. Lauren, how do you feel that preparations so far have gone this season? I think they've gone really well so far. I mean, we've had some difficult games, but I feel like they've really shown us what our strengths are and how well we can perform under pressure. When will you start thinking about the game? Then I know some players really, really like to think about the game, you know, a lot long time in advance. When do you start to switch on? <sighs> I don't even know if I ever switch on sometimes. <laughs> I'm normally in cuckoo land, but for me, I probably switch on when I'm coming out on that pitch. Yeah. I never switch on in change rooms. I try not to think about it, because the more I think about playing, the more I put pressure on myself yeah. and I can't perform as well. So coming out of that coming out of that tunnel, that's when I switch on. We're here with my Bradford Bulls teammate, Rhiannon Marshall. Rhiannon plays in the forwards. Rhiannon, playing against Featherstone, it's always a real tough battle. So how are you feeling ahead of the game next week? You know what they're going to bring. How, how does that make you feel as a forward? Well, personally, quite excited, really. Um, I love a good battle down middle, so bring it on, yeah. Bring it on? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they do. We played them at their place um, back at the start of the season and it was really tough and we always know that they're going to come. And Do you think that we stood up a little bit more than them that day? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think we were more the dominant 
da down the middle, definitely. Didn't really break much, much did they, so. And do you think that led to the to the victory on that day? Yeah, definitely. Most tries were scored out, 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 outside and I think that came a lot from, from the battle down the middle. Have you got, um, you know, like a memorable part of the season so far? Would, would you say one of them Featherstone games or is there anything that you, you see as being a, you know, a key moment for you in, in, in the season so far? Well, yeah, like I was away, obviously, playing against the Thato, Thato which was a great achievement to do to get us to the to the Challenge Cup. But for my, my personally, yeah, because it was one of the first games at season, I think we played Featherstone and I was expecting more, more of a battle coming from them. Yeah. Um, but to say the scoreline, yeah, I think that has to be my personally best game of the season. So in the final, what do you see for your performance? What are you gonna what do you want to achieve to make sure that you've performed to the best of your ability? What do you what do you think is going forward? If you've had a good game, what how what do you bring to the team? I bring my strength and um my fastness and um a quick play on the floor and the ball. Yeah, quick play of the ball and yeah. definitely you've missed one key one that I'd probably say if I'm playing with you or against you, your aggression. Mm hmm yeah? yeah. So I think, you know, playing in France, how did how did that help you? How did that help you prepare? Um it were amazing. I, I lo absolutely love the experience. Um it prepared me massively and just know how far I need to go now to be the best that I can be. And do you think playing against teams like Feverston who've got, you know, Without a doubt, two of the two of the toughest forwards Definitely. who also play for England and are in that lineup. Yeah. How does that prepare you for playing against teams like PNG and Australia? If I can play against two of the best forwards in, against Featherstone, and I feel like I. I do well at it, um, that prepares me massively. I'm pushing good stead. Yeah. So, you know, we've, we've been speaking about it. Um, can you talk us through these eyelashes? What, what is that about? Yeah, is that your pre-match preparation or is there something else behind that? I like to look good when I play, mate. It's in class. Shona, Shona's <laughs> strap line is, look good, play good. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Shona. Time it's great to hear from Lois there. And this week we went over with the Wakefield skipper, Danny Kermond. And we went to the Bird of Prey Sanctuary in York. Amazing. Mate, I wish I could have come. I'm gutted that I missed it. Was it like Kez? Mate. Come on, Kez. Come back, come back, Kez. Mate, I fell in love with Angel, the little barn owl. I'm actually thinking of building a sanctuary in my house to get a barn owl. Let's go check it out. I'm here at the York Bird of Prey Centre to meet Rugby League's favourite twitcher, Danny Kermond. And look, I've got my own little angel, my little barn owl. Absolutely beautiful. What a beautiful bird. Call that a bird, Simo. This is a bird. Ho, 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 ho. Come on. I'm a little bit in awe, mate, because I've got myself a little angel barn owl. Who have you got there? Got the golden eagle here, mate. The, the king, really, of the eagles. Uh, biggest British bird and uh, can do plenty of damage if I set it on you, Simo. Well, apparently it can kill a brown bear. We've been learning a little bit about it, but we're going to go now and speak to Andy Fawcett, who runs this fantastic centre, and get some more information on birds. Because you're a real keen bird man, mate. Yeah, I like getting out. It's uh, it's good to get out in uh, into nature. See more nice release from rugby, and uh, I do plenty of work with uh, barn owls in local area and Wakefield peregrines as well. So yeah, it's good to get out and having a great day down here at York Bird of Prey Centre. Right, let's go meet Andy Fawcett, the main man down here at the York Bird of Prey Centre. Good morning, Danny. It's great to have you and your team. Okay, obviously the, you've got interest in the birds, same as me. The passion I can see in your face already. Can you tell me a bit about yourself and how you got into this? Uh, yeah, well, a bit of a funny one, really. I mean, always when I was younger, I used to get out and about with my granddad, um, you know, what, just mainly looking for nests and things like that, um, and just developed an interest from there. And then a couple of years back, I put a picture of a barn owl on Instagram, and a uh, guy, Scott Hargreaves from Dewsbury, um, messaged me and said, oh, I do a bit with putting barn owl boxes up, little owl boxes and Fantastic. things like that, if you'd like to come out and, and have a look. So I've been going out with him last couple of years, and then through that really just tweeting about my interest uh, got involved with Wakefield Pre uh, Peregrines a right. guy called Francis Hickenbottom uh, runs that and you know it's uh, just been really successful since then they have to raise money to run a live camera and I've helped out a little bit with that and it's just fascinating to get to to view things that you don't normally get to in, in normal life really it's fantastic to know those people that you're there that care of about the birds have you got a favorite it's probably got to be, uh, even though I've got the Golden Eagle here, which is really amazing, uh, the Peregrine, just uh, watching them hunt and the way they, they fly around at such speeds, it's uh, just amazing to watch. They're superhuman, really. They are, it's amazing. Um, any facts you'd like to know while you're here? Because obviously there's quite a lot of, of different species here today. And uh, any favourite you'd like to talk about for a few few minutes? Yeah, well, I know you were telling us uh, about the Peregrine. I told Simo that they fly over 200 mile an hour and he, he didn't believe, believe us. And uh, we take quite a lot of impact with with rugby league but you've told us some fascinating facts on on the peregrine their impact so if you want to let the viewers know 
Right, uh, obviously my interest is, is a Peregrine also. I love to fly, it's amazing. And, and the speed, and, and for many years, man has been inspired by the speed and its ferocious wing beat and the spinning gaps. And the record speed in the world recorded today stands at 242 miles an hour. And it was actually filmed by a pilot back in World War II. Oh, yeah. And the plane had been shot down and they were noticed by a photograph that the Peregrine was beside it. And they estimated around 240, 242 miles an hour, wow. which is incredible. But what's interesting, in my opinion, is you guys. You guys, when you tackle each other, it's amazing. I mean, I'm not built for rugby, obviously you guys are. Uh, the impact that you create is, it must be incredible. How do you feel when you're actually grabbing somebody else's body at the, the G-Force you're covering? Oh yeah, you, can, you kind of forget about it a little bit when you're playing. It's uh, probably the day after which uh, yeah. gets you a little bit. You feel like you've been in a few uh, bumps, uh, similar to a, a car crash really, yeah. The scientists have proven that the Peregrine Falcon, when it stoops down, it has to slow down to approximately 8,200 miles an hour approximately, depends if it's a female or male. And the impact on their body is incredible. And the scientists have proven they actually can touch 25G on the turn. So they slow down as they fall at the target, they close the third eyelid, like a crash helmet, which obviously you don't wear, yeah. obviously. <laughs> and they've got to protect the eye. And they actually 25 times the body weight, which is incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. And that's the thing, people don't really get a chance to see it. You don't think that you'll see peregrines around, really. But they are becoming more and more popular, especially in, in cities now. I know there's one in Leeds and on the university, Wakefield cathedral which is really fascinating to watch they have a, a live camera running as well if you want to check that out on wakefield naturalist site as well fantastic come on you met andy what a passionate man i think we met somebody who knows more about birds than you which is it's unbelievable. Have you learned some stuff today? Oh yeah, it's uh, you know some of these birds here, so I've, I've never seen before. They've got a lot of rare species and things like that. So it's just it's just fascinating, and inter interesting to come down and, and find out some more facts. You know, it's a real personal experience for everyone here. You can see everyone's got people showing them around and things like that. So it looks really good. Yeah, it's it's an amazing place to come visit. Now you've got one of one of your loves here, the peregrine falcon, Kez, as I'm calling it. It's really called Apollo, but I'm calling it Kez, uh, and it's. Uh, it's a beautiful bird, and you've got quite familiar with these birds. Yeah, I have. Yeah, it's um, it's a bit of a passion of mine. There's uh, one on actually on Wakefield Cathedral, a nest. It, it's been there, I think, four years now. Um, and there's a live camera on there, and I've just done a, a little bit of fundraising to help uh, Francis along with, with raising money for that to keep the live camera going because it's it's really fascinating. Wakefield, you know, it's a, a little bit run down in the city centre, but if you look up, it's a real beautiful place. The, the buildings are really nice, and then we've got a peregrine on the cathedral spire. When everyone's watching Love Island, he's watching the Falcons. <laughs>
made me meet new friends and have, have a good time. And in American football, it wasn't really that good because all, all the people there were older than me and all that. So you've got a convert from American football here to rugby. Got a new player as well, Caden. You've got a message to everyone, aren't you? What's your message? To add me on Instagram. Add him on Instagram. Add, <laughs> add him on Instagram. And me and Snapchat. And, and Snapchat. What's your, what is your Insta? Uh, my Insta is Caden underscore Lincoln. There you go. All the girls out there. He's a, he's a baller. <laughs> Steve-O, what do you reckon? He need, need a last. He needs a last. And um, what do you reckon today's game, mate? First team. It must be easier for you in the community when the first team are winning. Yeah, it does. It, it helps a lot. It makes it a bit easier when we go into schools, into community, and promoting the team because they're doing the business on the field. So, yeah, um, yeah it's helped us quite a lot this year, yeah. and we've been able to get a lot of people down for match day experience. So it's been great. You don't know me. You've never seen me play. You don't know my name. You don't even know how to pronounce my name. I'm not a big star. You may think I'm a nobody, but nobody trains harder. Nobody wants it more. Nobody will surprise you. Nobody's tougher. Nobody. And come this October, who you don't know can hurt you. Massive, massive win for St. Helens there. Great performance. We're here with John Wilkin. John, you must be happy with where you finish off there. Yeah, no, we, I mean, it was a big game for us today. We, we've been gathering a bit of momentum. We want to get in that top four. And uh, Wakefield are a credible team, you know, this year. They've, they've been exceptional and deserving of their spot at the top of the table. So we knew it was going to be tough. Uh, but in short, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're on that pursuit of uh, that top four right now. Pursuit of perfection. What I noticed today was that he was passing the ball a little bit more. There was a bit more going on between the forwards, and I think he made some clean breaks right through the Wakefield defence and got some two or three man overlaps as well. Shot, Are you uh, just shaping up to play a little bit more now at this, this yeah. top like, back end of the season? Well, I think what, what you need is to be able to play sort of in numerous ways, don't you? you yeah, know, yeah. In a tough game, be direct. The teams that are tight and want to be aggressive with you play a bit. Yep. And then there's a balance between the two. And you're constantly, as you know, flicking between, aren't you? And yeah, yeah, you want to play a bit. Sometimes you'll pull it back. Sometimes you play too much, don't you? Yep. Uh, I thought today we nailed it. Not only has the gap gone down to one point between Saints and yourself, you've dropped down to fifth jobs. It's, it's a tough one because you've lost the home game now in the, in the eights. Yeah, it is, a, it is a tough one. You know, uh, we wanted that third spot, uh, get that extra home game. But, you know, we've worked hard all year and I think we've just let ourselves down that last little bit. It's, it's been a great season though, Woody. It's, it's, nobody could predict Wakefield in that top four, especially spending under the cap. A new lease of life for, for Chubbs and yourself and, and many other players have come here, got a real togetherness. Are you happy with the season so far? Yeah, really happy. Um, I think the squad we've got here is really good. Um, I know we spent low on the cap, but I think we've got some really quality players. Oh, mate. Um, the, some of the games I've seen this year, you guys, Definitely, you know, you've, you've got it together. What do you put it down to, Jubs? Like, is, is, it, is it a special bond between the boys? And what do you need to do now to kick on? Because obviously it's been disappointing today. What do you need to do to kick on? I think we same as what we've been doing all year. We, we stick together and we work hard together. You know, we're not, we're not a team, uh, a flash team. You know, we just do the little things right and, and work hard for each other. And it's got us this far, so I think we just need to maintain and, and build on it. Going into this sort of final part of the season, this top eight Super 8s now, you're only one point or fourth. So Simo's been tipping you as dark horses all season. That performance must have given you a little bit of belief, or a lot of belief, going into this back end of the year as well. Yeah, I mean, last year we put a run together. and yeah. So we're confident we can do the same again. That being said, it's week on week now, isn't it? We're yeah, only one week off being written off again, so yeah. we've got to keep on with the detail of what we do. And, um, you know, the rest of it will take care of itself. You know, we want to be in that top four, but there's four or five sides, you know, that, that are equally as uh, hungry to be in that top four. So, we, you know, we, we've got a challenge on, but we're, we're, we're excited about the challenge. You know, that, that's uh, that, that's what we think's motivating, is that excitement of getting in that top four. So, it runs right back into the mix. You talk about week on week there. 
There's no game next week, obviously, it's Challenge Cup rounds. What are you going to do with yourself? A lot of lads disappear abroad sometimes, have a bit of time away. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm not sure, mate. I think we're going to train hard. <laughs> <laughs> mate, we've got a tough end of the year and right? we want to be in good nick and we, I think we're going to put a bit of hard work in. A bit, bit, couple of days off, obviously, but we're, 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 we're ramping up, really training hard. Last three or four weeks we've been really training hard, so uh, that's going to continue for a couple of weeks and then we'll cruise on. And uh, last question before you go, John. Me and Timo want to know why you've not been returning our calls, mate. Mate, well, yeah, I didn't save you. I've only just saved your number. <laughs> no, I've had this strange number ringing me with this sort of this grumbly sort of West Yorkshire accent, <laughs> leaving me messages. You, you know what you are? You always what? ring me when I'm in, doing something. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, leave, you left a message. I was in London in a meeting, and you rang me. And then, right. to be fair, I, I didn't ring you back. I'm really John, sorry. John Buchanan, end. That's what he did. <laughs> I've saved <laughs> your number now. Good on you. Good on you. We've got a rugby <laughs> minis over uh, over your way. Going to get one of the boys to come down and spot that. I think, yeah, I'll get Danny Richardson, our young halfback, cocky yep. young halfback. Right. It'd be great for him to go and see those young lads. And uh, I think they probably the younger players probably w want to be more like him than they do me. Yeah. So it might, <laughs> might suit them more. Happy days. Rub Bay Minis over at St. Helens. You've got some good St. Helens players coming to see you soon. So check it out. Mate, you've had some awful injuries. We're going to have been cursed with bad injuries. But Wakefield, that far behind, key men like Tom Johnson, Jacob Miller. You know, I know Milky's close to coming back, but you know, they're, they're really important players for you guys. Yeah, I think people don't realise that. I think people think that we haven't had many injuries, but but we have, um, and um, it shows how good a squad is in, in depth. Like we've brought some people who's played a lot of Super League into our team, and they've really made a difference. Yeah, but like like I said, like you said, uh, when when Milky comes back, um, he's going to be like a fresh player to us, and he's going to hopefully give us that spark in the Super Eights. Well, the eights are nearly upon us now. It's going to be a close season. What would it mean for this club and obviously you boys to maybe make that semi-final and, and push into the top four? Because you can achieve it, can't you? Do you believe? Yeah, definitely. You know, we've we've been up there all year. Um, a lot of people have written us off, and you know we're sat in fifth now, not not too far off the, the four. So I think a couple of good wins get some confidence back up, and uh, who knows what can happen for us. Right, I'm lucky today, boys. Right now, it's time to go outside and meet the crazy ones, the fans. It's fan cam. Let's go to work. Let's go. UK Red Fire and Security fan camp in Cats Bar at the end of the game. Mate, what's your name, pal? Luke Hodgson. Mate, disappointed. Or what, what, what was your feeling today? Well, I'm disappointed with result, but I expected it to be a close game than it were, actually. Do you play today? Did you play better than the Wakefield team? Yes. Wait, what would you be saying now in changing room to them? You're rubbish. That's a bit harsh. Kes is a legend. It was sad to see him go. Yeah, very sad. Very sad. But I think Justin's brought that different attack in. He's brought the flair back into Saints. And as we just said, never had a Saints off, mate. It's a bit disappointing that we didn't finish third or nearly fourth. But I think we can pull through in Super 8 and nearly get a top four finish. But overall, you're happy with this season because Wakefield have improved so much this year. Yeah, I think we've had a better season than last one, but it would be nice to finish somewhere higher and get higher in the grand final. Rest of the season, do you believe? Yes. Do you really? Oh, yes. yes. John Keir, Chesley, the right men for the job? Definitely. Definitely. We need, we need somebody like Luke Cannon on here. Get, get him Would you sign him? Would you sign Jones? I can bring him, definitely. I love him, mate. I think he's dead. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah. We've got the talent in the squad. We've got the time in the squad. We've got a fantastic academy. We're not a selling club. But over previous years, we have been a selling club. We need to keep our players and basically just gel and keep Chester and keep Kerr. That's what we need. That's what we need. Basically, that's what we need. You heard it here first. That's your UK Red Fire and Security fan cam. Big shout from Wakefield. Thank you very much. Good night. God bless. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry.